This is High Adventure. Stories that have all three. Danger, escape, suspense. And here is the man of High Adventure, George Sanders. This is High Adventure, and I am George Sanders. I act as host and moderator for our meetings of the High Adventure Society. We gather along about this time each week, and we spend some of our time exchanging exploits, discussing the oddities of nature, and occasionally we touch on the subject of women. Now, <laughs> uh, don't be alarmed. Our membership is made up of both men and women. Shall we say it's um, co-educational? Uh, about High Adventure? Well, I don't intend to leave you at loose ends. I believe that would be unfair to both of us. So I'll give you an example of High Adventure, and you may learn by saying. Let us take two men, two women, and a truck. An interesting combination. A High Adventure story. This one is called Cold Storage. Ed Slayton, you were a truck driver. You rolled your big rig at night most of the time. You kept strange hours, and you kept strange company, too. Your company was Faye, a neat little nightclub dancer, blonde and bewitching. You had a deep desire to be rid of Faye, but you found yourself tied. You couldn't seem to break loose. Faye had a hold on you like alcohol might have on some other men. You tried so many times, and you failed so many times. Finally, you were assigned a freezer run to the coast with your friend Pete. To you, this looked like the big chance to get away, get away for good. Here was your way out. Hiya, Pappy. She's all loaded, ready to be checked and sealed. Fine, I'll get Frankie. Sit down. What's the hurry? I just want to get started. Always in a hurry. We got four days to get there. I don't like to sit around and wait. Got a cigarette? Nah, I was uh, gonna get some at the corner. Get me a couple of packs, too, huh? All right, all right. Oh, I forgot. Forgot what? Your babe's outside in her car. She wants to see you. Faye? You think I'm kidding? She can wait. I wouldn't let that wait, Pappy. Get the smokes, will you, Pete? Okay, okay. Then maybe you don't mind if I... You see? You don't go out, she comes after you. <laughs> Some guys don't know when they're lucky. No. I thought you'd come out when you knew I was waiting. I was talking with Pete here. Well, I want to talk with you. Go ahead. Not in front of him. All right, let's go inside. You can stay in here, Pappy. I'll go get the smokes. If you ever get tired of Ed, honey child, just look me up. Thanks. Maybe I will. Well, you got the place all to yourself. Frankie's over in the office. He won't bother you. <laughs> all right, what do you want, Faye? Aren't you glad to see me? What do you want? Me? You got to have help, Eddie. You're the only person I could turn to. How about your friend Ferrano? He couldn't do it. It's because... You go to him. Can't. You did the other night. It was business, Eddie. He owns the club, and if he wanted to buy... Sure, me... sure. Well, let him help you. I'm busy. Don't you like me anymore? I don't like to be kicked around. I didn't mean to. It was business. Yeah, yeah, business. Eddie, come here. Yeah? Don't be mean to me. Leave me alone. Put your hand in my hair. You said you like it soft the way it is. No. Eddie. What do you want? What do you want? You do still like me. I knew you did all the time. I can't help it. You, you... Don't lift my head too much, Eddie. I got to go back to the club. Hey, baby. You'll help me, won't you, Eddie? Sure, sure, I'll help you. I knew you would. You ask it. I, I got to get rid of something. Yeah? It's in the car outside. Okay. I didn't know what to do with it, so I came to you. Sure, sure. What is it? Serrano. What? He's dead. I don't get it. I, I got his body out in the car. I got to get rid of it, Eddie. You got to what? I can't drive around with it, can I? Well, what happened to him? He was stabbed to death. So somebody got to him, huh? It's about time. Eddie, listen to me. We gotta get rid of it. Well, that's easy enough. Drive to the police station. I'll know what to do. I can't. Why would I come to you if it was that well, easy? Why can't you? Because I killed him. Isn't that reason enough? He couldn't do anything else. Said he was drunk and he was mean and vicious. He would have killed me if I hadn't killed him. You gotta understand. Sure, sure. I understand. What are you gonna do with him? You think I'd help you? You gotta. I don't have to do anything. You're the only one, Eddie. You've always been the real one for me. You've always known that. Yeah, yeah. I'll do anything you want, Eddie. You always ask me to marry you. I'll do that. Wouldn't you like me for a wife, wouldn't you, Eddie? The cops will get you. I might have to get away, too. I don't know, but I can't do anything until I get that out of my car. If I could get it away where they wouldn't find it, not for a while, at least. Come here. What? Come here. Yeah. Eddie. We'll have to be careful. You see this freezer? I'm driving it to the coast with Pete as soon as Frankie checks and seals it. If you can get Ferrano in the back. I'll get it open and stall Frankie for a few minutes. I knew you'd help Put him me. behind the cooling pipes. Frankie won't see it. Can you lug him along? Yes, yeah, sure I can. He's not big. I'll drop it off somewhere along the way where somebody won't find it for weeks. 
Lots of empty space between here and the coast. I was sure you'd take care of me somewhere. I am. You're going to take a train and meet me at Ray's in San Diego. You get it? Ray's in San Diego. Yeah, I'll be there, Eddie. Ray's in San Diego. Then we'll figure what to do from there. Yeah, I was one my kind of guy, I'll Eddie. miss you, baby. I'll miss you. But you'll be there at the end of the line. Yeah, you know Not me. Not much time. Pete will be back. Come on. It's pretty dark, but I'll cut this light so you won't be seen. I'll make it. Put him behind the pipe. That's right. And leave the door open. They close with an outside latch. And I want Frankie... Don't to... worry. I'll get him in. Ray's in San Diego. Remember now. Yeah, I will. I will. Come here. Now, now, Eddie, you said there wasn't much time. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. You have the door open. Sure, sure. Frankie. Oh, what's the matter? You look funny. Nothing's the matter, Frankie. Oh, for a minute I thought you were sick. You feel all right? I'm fine. Well, I guess you and Pete want to get started, huh? Well, there's no hurry. Got the manifest? There's no rush. Pete's down at the corner. Come on, let's check the load. I want to get home. I, uh, the... uh just a minute, Frankie. Well? I, uh, uh, I want to ask you something. Well, go ahead. Well, I, uh... Well, go on, go on. Uh, I, I was wondering, yeah, I, I was wondering if there was some way I could, uh, I, I could stay on the coast, yeah, that's it. Well, it took you long enough to say it. What do I want to stay on the coast for? Oh, I, I don't know. I'm tired of this part of the country. Maybe that's it. You want a job out there? Yeah, yeah, that's it, a job. Well, why didn't you say so? You talk to Benny Flynn in our coast office, see what he says. Sure, thanks. Yeah, I, I hate to lose you, though. You're a good driver. Well, you know how it is. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, come on, come on, let's go. Hey, uh, Frankie, wait a minute. Hey, what's got into you, Eddie? I want to go home. No, I, just, I just wanted to ask, ask you. Ask me some other time. I'm tired. Get the manifest out of the cab, will you? Yeah, sure. All right, let me see it. Why do they need a freezer for this stuff? Ah, it's medicine of some kind. Got to keep it below freezing or it spoils. Oh, oh. 59 cases, seven packages. Oh, mate, it'll take me an hour to check. Yeah. Rose will murder me if I'm late. Look, uh, uh, Frankie, I... I was just checking for weight so they wouldn't roll. Went straight down to manifest. Everything was there. It was, huh? Uh-huh. You, you just seal it up and go on home. I even left the door open when I was checking. Oh, it. you want to spoil the stuff? Well, I didn't know. I thought... I thought... Let me get it sealed now. Ah, there's your manifest. Now, don't break that seal or we'll be in trouble. Yeah. We won't take delivery if that seal's broken. That's the only way they know the stuff didn't burn up, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going home. You're not going to check the load, huh? Well, if you checked it, why should I do it again? Might get too hot in here, and I don't want to get the blame for it. Now, keep that pump going night and day. Sure, see? sure. If any local yokels want an inspection along the way, show them the papers. But don't let them break the seal. I won't, Frankie, no. All set, Peppy. Let's get rolling. You ready, Pete? I'll see you in a couple of weeks, Frankie. Yeah, not if I can help. I'll watch Eddie there. You know, he's been acting kind of funny. Ah, don't worry about him. Okay, Eddie. Sure. You take the first run? Yeah. Hey, you sing goodbye to Faye? Yeah. I'll bet you hate that, huh? You lucky bum. What a cream puff. Yeah. Ed Slayton, you gunned the motor on the big rig and headed for the open road. When you rolled out of the garage, you passed Faye's little convertible. It was empty. You figured she was hiding until Frankie went back into his office. As the oil-stained highway slipped out from under the wheels of your rig, you began to think. You'd have to break the seal on that door to get the body out. Once the seal was broken, there'd be questions about it. And you had to watch Pete, too. But at the end of the line, a reward. Faye would be waiting. You rolled all that night and the next day, and you began to relax. And when you began to relax, an awful thing happened. You began to think straight. It was then that the picture became perfectly clear. You had been pulled into a sucker deal. Ah, this stump looks okay. The other boys are pulled in. Let's go, Pappy. I'm not very hungry. Ah, you never are. Come on. Well, are you coming or not? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, Petey. Hey, look at the paper. Yeah? Look. Yeah. They're looking for a waiter, seen her do it. You know all about it, huh? That's why she came to see you last night, huh? Yeah, yeah. They may even start looking for you. They won't if they don't know about me. Hmm? You're the only one who can tell them. Me? Well, you know, I wouldn't tell any. Yeah, thanks, Petey. I'm your pal, Babby. Come on, let's get rolling. You don't want your coffee? I'll get some at the next stop. Now, who'd have thought it? A beautiful cream puff like face stabbing a guy. Well, it just goes let's to show you... Let's forget it, huh, Petey? Yeah, sure, I know how you feel. Yeah. Just like I was telling you, you never can tell what a dame has got. Hey, who are you? Out of the cab, kid. Let go. Come on, out. <laughs> we don't carry riders, kid. Company rules. I'll beat it before your mother misses you. I just you. wanted to ride to... Hey, take... he's no kid. It's a dame. I just wanted to ride. You picked the wrong truck, sister. You're going west. Yeah, but you're not going, not with us. We can't leave her standing out here in the middle of the night, can we? We huh? can and we will. The rule is... When are... did you ever listen to the rules No before? hitchhikers on I'm the SF. I'm not a hitchhiker. It's okay, honey. It's not a hitchhiker, huh? I've been waiting for you to come out. Well, sister, if you think you can force... Sure we'll take you, cream puff. No, Pete. What's the matter? Can't I have a girl, too? You'll only get us into Dutch. You got a girl, remember? What? I said you got a girl, Pevy. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, all right. But I'm not responsible. Get in, Green Buff. The name's Virginia. Okay. All right, Pete, I'll take it. That's fine with me, fine. You don't really mind, do you? Ed? Is that what he calls you? Sure, me? I mind, but I can't do anything about it. I'm Pete, Jenny. Call me Pete. Sure, Pete. Guess your pal doesn't like me. Right now, he don't like any woman, huh, Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> rolled back on the highway and started around the hairpin turns in the mountains. I was no better off than before, maybe worse. I hadn't got rid of the body, and now there was somebody else to dodge. Two of them, Pete and Ginny. And at the end of the line, Faye was waiting. It was still dark early the next morning when I saw another chance. We were deep in the mountains. The traffic was light. I was driving. Pete was leaning against the far door asleep, and the girl Ginny was lying in the bunk behind the seat. She hadn't spoken. When I looked around, her eyes were closed. I waited for the right spot to come along, then slowly eased the 10-ton semi to a stop. I sat behind the wheel for a second, getting up courage. There was a cliff on the other edge of the road. The body could roll down it and not be found for weeks, if ever. Now was the time. I opened the door and started to slide out, but a voice in my ear stopped me. Why are we stopping, Eddie? Huh? Close the door. It's cold. I, uh, I thought you were asleep. I was. Oh, where are we? Nowhere. Close the door. I'm getting cold. All right. Oh, that's better. Why'd you stop here? I, uh, I was getting sleepy myself. Well, maybe you better let Pete drive. I'm all right. Oh, if you're asleep. I said I'm all right. Ed. Yeah? What's the matter with me? I don't know. What is it? I said I don't know. Then why don't you like me? Maybe I do. You don't. All right, I don't. What's she like? Who? The girl you got? The one Pete said you had? Oh. Is it just a girl? You like her? That was a silly question, wasn't it? No. I don't like her. I don't like her at all. But you did. She wasn't worth liking. But you did. Yeah, I did. I knew somebody, too. He wasn't worth liking either, but I couldn't help it. What'd you do? I ran away. Each mile further away, I felt better. It's like swimming up from the bottom of a muddy river. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a radio? I'd like some music. Bust. Oh. Well, it's all right. All you do is run, huh? If you're man enough. Yeah, I see. Suppose you run, you get to the end of the line, and you still haven't run away. There isn't any end of the line, Ed. There never is, there never has been. No. Are you going straight back when you get to San Diego? Huh? Oh, oh, no, no. I thought I might stick around a while, maybe stay. Will you come to see me? Well, sure. I'd... No, I'll, I'll be too busy. I wish you would. I said I'll be too busy. All right. 
I'd like to come to you. Then why don't I you? I can't. Of course you can. I tell you, I can't. I've got to... I don't know. I don't know. You don't have to do anything. That's easy to say. All right, Ed. Brother, now's your chance to become the champ chump, Ed Slayton. And I have a feeling about these things. Just put a good-looking female and nice chap in the right situation. Is there a wrong situation? You may be hanging from a cliff by your fingers, but if she is there, she'll step on them. And we must have our lighter moments, you know. For the serious side, we have two women and two men, two pairs, which is a good bet, a good bet that we have the kind of story that only can be called high adventure. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the Presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? He was born in Ohio in 1833, and seven years later, his grandfather became president. During the Civil War, he was a brigadier general, and from 1881 to 1887, served in the United States Senate. One year later, he was elected to the presidency. You should know his name by now, but if you don't, here are two more clues. During his administration, the McKinley Tariff Act was passed and the first Pan American Congress meeting was held. And, in addition to being the grandson of a president, he was a great grandson of one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Yes, he was Benjamin Harrison, 23rd President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. <laughs> High adventure and the startling conclusion to cold storage. Ed Slayton, suddenly you knew what was going to happen and exactly what you were going to do. As you drove, you kept looking at this girl, looking back over your shoulder at her. And as you drove, the coast drew closer and so did the end of your trip. You thought about Faye. Pete took over the wheel for you in the morning and you climbed back into the bunk. Sleep came immediately. You slept for some time till something caused you to waken, the swaying of the truck, voices, or both. You're going to sit over here. Will you let go? What's the matter with you? Let huh? me out. You're not going to come over here any time? Watch where you're driving. Didn't I give you a ride? That doesn't mean you own me. Well, cut it out, can... Pete. Huh? I said cut it out, leave the kid alone. you got one girl, remember? That doesn't mean anything. It will if I tell the next state trooper we meet. I said leave her alone. You think I can't Please have don't. you? All right, all right. Get me. Get me. Get me. Get me. Get me. Ed! Grab the wheels, Jenny, quick. You won't turn. Let me get at it. We'll hit the bridge. Hold Pete back. You hit him pretty hard. Can't turn this wheel. Eddie, Ed! Get tight. Okay. Oh, I thought you were waiting at it. See if you can slide Pete up back. No, no, you better steer while I do it. I'll try. Just keep it on the road. Is he badly hurt? No, no, I just caught him one on the jaw. He'll come out of it soon. No. Let me get behind the wheel. Oh, my fault. You and Pete are good friends. Yeah, we just work together. Oh. Ginny, I'd like... Uh, What's wrong? Inspection station up ahead. Well, what about Pete? When we stop in line, you see those bushes? We'll yeah. open the door and roll him into them. Well, couldn't we say he's asleep? No, no, no. We can't take the chance. He'll wake up and talk. Won't hurt him. I gotta have the time. Gotta have the time to do it my own way. Do what? Never mind. All right, Ed. Let me handle it. Remember now. Yeah, it's an inspection, all right. Well, then everything's all right. It will be. Open the door. Ed. Open it. Now shove him out. Nobody's looking. Don't you think... Shove him out. <laughs> That's it. He'll stay there in the bushes till he comes out of it. All right, you. Let's see your manifest, weight certificate, and license. Get that door closed. All right. You hear me, mister? Yeah, yeah, sure. Here, uh... Here they are. Who's the girl? My wife. We're going to stay on the coast. Mm. Cease. Check his plates and tires. Yes, sir. Well, come on. Let's open her up and have a look. Why? I said open up the trailer and let's check your load. You think I'm going to go by this manifest? Look, pal, this is a freezer. It's bonded. I don't care. I want to check it. Sorry, you can't do it. Who says I can? Look at the paper. What? That stuff's perishable if it gets above freezing. Medicine or something. I don't I'm know. I'm still going to check it. I told you it's bonded. Got a seal on the back. You open it and the stuff spoils, you're liable. Don't say I didn't warn you. Seal? That's what I said. Oh, I I'll see. I'll sue you so fast your head will swim. You should have told me it was sealed. It's in the papers. Yeah, but I still ought to give you a summons. What for? Reckless driving. Get rolling. All right. Well, uh, got out of that one. What's the matter? Nothing, Eddie. Guess there is an end of the line after all. 
It's San Diego up there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. This is the police station, Ed. Yeah, I know. San Diego. End of the line, kid. Come on, get out. But, Eddie... Just stick around. I want you to hear this. Move it, buddy. You can't park it here. Maybe I can, officer. I said you can't. I got something for you. Oh, you have? A dead body I've kept in cold storage for you. Are you drunk? Come on, I'll show you. What kind of a story are you giving me? Tony Ferrano. What's left of him. You probably got notices on him. Hey. Just a minute. You can have him. Now, he's, he's right behind the... Hey, you got your bodies mixed. This was the dame that killed him. We got her picture. Well, hey. Hey, there's another one back in here. What are you doing carrying these two stuffs around? Hey, you got some talking to do, buddy. She must have got locked in. Was that her, Eddie? Yeah, yeah. The door must have closed on her, and she couldn't get out. Froze to death. She was very beautiful. Yeah. She wouldn't have come and met me anyway. And I wouldn't have stopped at Ray's to find out if she did. She put herself on ice. Round back, buddy. I'm going to have to hold you till this thing's straightened out. Yeah, sure. Ed. It's okay, Jenny. You go on. I'll wait for you. Might take some time, kid. They're going to pin something on me. I'm sure of that. I'll wait. Come on, buddy. Eddie? Yeah? Still not the end of the line, is it? Huh? Is it, Ed? No. No, not now. It's not even cold storage, baby. I'm just coming up through the river. And I can swim, Jenny. I can swim. A really thrilling story of high adventure. The next time you see one of those big freezer trucks rolling along the highway, be sure to give him plenty of room. After all, you won't have any idea what his cargo is. Might even be someone's mother-in-law and tucked away in that huge wagon. Now, I'm just joking. I have a great regard for mothers-in-law, or is it uh, mother-in-laws? <laughs> that make up high adventure, be sure you're tuned our way at the same time next week. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>